Daisy J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. <laughs> awesome is right yes. there, Stacey. Kari Walgren on the show today. So awesome. Animation, video games, anime, anime, you name it, this girl is happening. You hear her all over the place. She is so versatile, such a great story, so much to talk about. So we're going to do that right now. Come with us. Guys, our guest is a gifted actress and singer who you know from anime, animation, video games, and so much more. Just a few of her fabulous characters are Tigress and Kung Fu Panda's Legends of Awesomeness. Let's see, Chloe Carmichael in The Fairly Odd Parents, Little Susie in Phineas and Ferb, and so many others. We are so excited to get buzzed with the super sassy and totally talented Kari Walgren. Yeah, <laughs> ladies Yay! and gentlemen, Hi. please stand up. Stand oh, up. Oh, no. They're so doing the way. They're please. doing the way. Stop. You're not I'm worthy. I'm blushing. <laughs> How are you? So How are you? good to be here with you guys. It's so oh, good to be so here. We're so excited to have you, man. This has wow. been in the works yes. for a while. For this a long time. Yeah. We you just... are busy. Uh, knock on Knock on, knock on something. Yeah, knock on yeah. something. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Well, You're listen, on Fyra, you, as they say. Fyra, she's on Fyra. Fyra. I um, am smoking just a little. No, that's <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. Small that's drink, funny. small drink. Um, so let's, uh, let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. And uh, tell us about, you know, you growing up in, you're from Kansas, correct? Yes, very so, tiny town. Okay, cool. So tell us about, you know, how you went from uh, Kansas to L.A. Okay. Uh, well, I grew I grew up in this really tiny town in the middle of the state. Like people say, well, where where is this town? And mm -hmm. I, I'd like point in the map and say it's right there in the middle. And uh, I was just always really fascinated with cartoons yeah. when mm -hmm. I was a kid. And so I was always the the kid running around the house and like acting out the the movies and things like that. And uh, and I just always knew somebody was doing the voices mm -hmm. behind it. And I, I said, one day I'm going to do those voices and things. And just very an odd. How old were you when you were thinking that? Five. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Five, six. That's good. When I, I, I never thought Planting stuff like that. It was, five. it was bizarre. It was yeah. either that or a world class gymnast, and yeah. you know, I had no rhythm, so it was <laughs> like, okay, I'll do funny voices. That balance beam is no joke. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. It's really not. Yeah. You know, and you have to have, like coordination. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, crazy. And the yeah. bangs. No. And the, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I did have the Dorothy Hamill haircut. I did too. Did. did you? I did. I was a roller skater. <sighs> See, you know. I had it. That's the only time and one other time in my life that I've had short hair. The, there are probably and I had the doll. photos. I had the Dorothy Hamill doll, the, too. Did you? Yeah. Sorry, Chuck. Do you have the, the bad only time turtle? I had did they short have hair Dorothy Hamill in Cuba? Did they have her doll in Cuba? No! Sorry. We're leaving you out. <laughs> Okay, How anyway. How did you not have the Dorothy Hamill dolls in Cuba? Not a lot of ice Because cream. they did not have those in Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> they have Cuban cigar. Well, well and hopefully her bird. haircut missed, yeah. missed you yeah. guys then because it yeah. was maybe not the most flattering time in hair history. But uh, it, was a, it was interesting. Yeah. But anyway, back to you. So, so, oh, no, so yeah. I, I just kind of, you know, I was growing up in Kansas and and uh, ended up going to school at the University of Kansas and then uh, had some people say, well, you should really think about moving out to Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. so I was really the ultimate cliche, like the, the fresh faced girl, like fresh off the bus from Kansas and <laughs> I'm gonna go to Los Angeles. And I did and it was hard and, yeah. and all that sort of thing, but uh, it just, Got an agent and kind of fell into the voiceover mm -hmm. thing. So. so you, so you actually came here with this mindset of I want to do voiceover. I did. You know, in wow. fact, when I was in uh, Kansas, no, well, uh, she's a prodigy. Well, we skipped yeah, a, a few prodigy. years. <laughs> we skipped a few years, trust me. But uh, no, I actually, when I was still in Kansas City, I made an am animation demo, and I had no idea what, kind of what an animation demo would sound like. Mm -hmm. Anime. Yeah. Uh, so I put together this animation demo and I did a lot of different voices and I, when I moved out to Los Angeles I started mailing it out to people yeah. and, mm -hmm. and just got absolutely no response and eventually started taking classes and just said I need to get feedback from somebody and yeah. the feedback that I got was you're doing too many things on the demo. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're doing too many things, put together a better demo and once I did that I actually got the agent. Yeah. So Nice. Yeah. And and you, well, I want to ask real quick. How long was your How long was your demo? That first demo that you made. It was like you uh, 
like five minutes minute. long? Oh, minute. Oh, no. Ooh. No, short and sweet. In and wow. out with 75 okay. characters. That's right. Do yeah. you remember back in the days when they had five-minute demos and three-minute demos and all these oh. like, super long demos with like 85,000 yeah. things on them? I think I, I think I made a lot of those when I was much younger. Yeah. I was recording. This is, I feel so ancient when I talk about it now, but, you know, I was recording things on cassette tape. Yeah. And, right. you know. It, it, which really wasn't that long it ago. It wasn't that long It's not like it was real to real. I mean, give yourself a break. Yeah, babe. I mean, I, there's yeah. a cassette tape right there. It's <laughs> just for looks, ladies and gentlemen. Is that yeah, that thing with real. dust on it over there? Yeah, <laughs> it's got a little bit of dust on it. it it's worth more <laughs> with the dust. Yeah. Um, no, but it's true. We, and we'd, we'd record on, on stuff and we'd mail yeah. out the cassette tapes and Totally. Everything. Those were the fun days, those man. Were the fun I days. mean, now you just like turn on a digital thing and there it is. Yeah. yeah. It just appears. Mixtapes. Um, I miss Now you don't even need a CD. I mean, people are yeah. like, yeah, a CD of your demo. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so you moved down here and you, and you got an agent. So what was your first like, you know, big break that you can remember in voiceover? Like the first thing that you did that really... Oh, okay. So the first... I think the first thing that I booked out here was uh, was a radio commercial for Six Flags, and all I did was scream. So they'd be like, it was around Halloween time, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and they're like, you know, what, what, how do you feel going on the rides at, ah! and how do you feel about going on this ride? Ah! And it was just like one scream over and over and over again, and I. That I got paid to do it. <laughs> and you probably made residuals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She got paid over and over to do it. That's right. That's Dreaming cool. is an art. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, it's it's a it's definitely a hard thing. Um, why don't you ask Kari uh, a question? So I feel you. you <laughs> I know. Like, There's something inquiring minds. Like, well, well, no, I I you know Chuck obviously is is the demo wizard. Um, and I and I was reading that you had said that a bad demo is worse than no demo. Oh, which is fantastic! And you just have to know that he's con contemplating getting that uh, tattooed on him. Because, really? Yeah. I mean, Can I tattoo it on <laughs> you? Absolutely, man. Because I. So I, when I saw that, I said, "Oh my gosh!" I mean, you you are kindred spirit because that's such a. It's huge. It's huge, and and in fact, it's so funny because I was holding myself back from launching into my my soapbox, mm -hmm. which is this thing about bad demos yeah. and 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 I think I learned that from experience because when I came to LA I had this demo and it didn't serve me well mm -hmm. and once I remade a new demo uh, some of the same agents that passed on me the first time around were interested the second time around mm. uh, but there is nothing that screams out I'm green I'm inexperienced more than having a bad demo yeah. put together yeah. and it's kind of a constantly evolving process too. I mean, I've updated mine over the years and could probably stand to do it again. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have friends that are working actors that have also said, hey, take a listen to my demo. I haven't redone it for you know 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can really tell well, that yeah, like even for- Yeah, a lot for, of things have changed. Yeah, right. even for a, working actors. you're probably better one hopes. Uh. <laughs> I always tell people, why show how good you were when you can show how good right. you are? I like that. I'm thinking that tattoo. You can we'll we'll switch tattoos. We'll be like, yeah. yeah Maybe you can get a two one. for one special. You can you steal go. mine. I'll steal yours. That's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I, tequila and and shot. Oh yeah, gosh. Right there. Right there. We're Woo. getting them tats. Ugh. I want to talk a little bit more about demos because what is the, it's the most important tool that a voice actor can possibly have. Yes. Right? So, and me being a demo producer and, me, and people always coming to me and say, hey, I want to do a demo. And my first thing is, the thing that I say is, are you ready to make a demo? Because you shouldn't make one before you're ready. But I love your little saying about the worst thing than making, well, what is it again? One more time before I have it tattooed. A bad demo is worse than no demo at all. Huh? I, be I believe it. So strongly, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody tattoo it on their arm. Absolutely. Yeah. And and how do you make a bad demo? Well, when you making a demo when you're not, not ready, ready. Yeah. Okay. Not being prepared to make one. Not being coached. Not knowing what's happening out there. Yeah. So give us a little bit because I mean obviously you're a pro man. You've been doing this for a while and you know you know what it takes to get an agent. You know what it takes to keep an agent. You know what it takes to audition and actually you know be able to book because you're staying relative to what's happening today with the trends. So what advice would you give people out there in regards to making their first or their second demo or updating their demo? Okay. 
Well, the first thing that I would say is to be very wary of taking a class where they say that you will walk out with a demo. Yes. Um, very rarely do you walk out of a class with something that you can use on a demo unless you've gone over and over it in the class and maybe you get a few seconds that are usable. Yeah. But but very, I, I would say that that's a big red flag for any Huge. class that yes. says that you're gonna have a demo mm -hmm. walking out of the class. Yeah. That's, that's not true. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I would say is timing. You know, we were joking about how there were five minute demos, there were three minute demos. Mm -hmm. You really should have a demo that's no more than two minutes long no more than a minute and a half, in my personal opinion, yeah. and the closer you can get it to a minute, mm -hmm. the better. Yeah. Because the thing that you'll find is, um, you know, if you go to any of the websites online where they they have all of the demos that you can listen to for free, like yeah. videovoicebank.net, mm -hmm. uh, places like that, you can listen to a bunch of demos. And you will find that even you, as an amateur or, you know, a semi-professional, whatever stage you're at, you'll find that you will be listening to demos, and after you've listened to maybe about six or seven, you will find that you start skipping to other demos. Mm -hmm. yep. And then you have to stop and ask yourself, what is it that's keeping me listening to this demo for about five seconds, and this one for about 15 seconds, and this one for about two seconds? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, if you are lucky, somebody's gonna listen to your demo for the first 10 seconds. And if they hear something in that first 10 seconds, you're hoping that it hooks their interest enough for them to listen a little bit longer. Right. So keep the demo short, keep the demo short. I mean, the most you're hoping from the demo is to incite enough interest to meet the agent, mm -hmm. to meet the possible client or producer. You don't have to do a whole session for them on your demo. Exactly. Right. It's a right. teaser. Not, it's a teaser. Not a complete, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a teaser. So you want to keep it very short. You want to keep your strongest material um, up front. Don't ever fall into that trap of, well, I'm going to save my juiciest little character <laughs> thing for last. Yeah, Don't I want it to that. end yeah. with a bang. I want to yeah. end with a bang. You're going to be lucky <laughs> if they get to the end. So, yeah. so really make sure that it starts out strongly. Um, this is kind of uh, up for debate, but Something that I heard when I was, was coming up is um, there was a specific casting director in animation that really liked to hear a character closer to your natural voice mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because this particular casting director wanted to get a baseline. Uh, and I think even for voiceover agents, that can be helpful as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so starting out something that's at least a general representation of your baseline yeah. is great. You don't have to stay on that for a long time, but right. it's something that I've heard here and yeah. there. Well, and you hear so much in, in video games especially, it has more of that real tone and animation. Even a lot of the characters, they don't want the cartoony sound. They Correct. want something that's more real, so. And, and the demo is a marketing tool. And uh, when I first signed with my very first agent, I actually had uh, half of the demo commercial and then half animation, so they could listen to the commercial half or click on the second track and they could listen to the animation mm -hmm. half. Right. Um, and it's a marketing tool. You're selling what they need in that agency. So they're looking for a niche. What niche can you fill yeah. in our roster? roster. Right. So this goes into getting clear about your voice type. And that is so important also. It's just like with on-camera acting, you know, if you have a guy that's kind of kind of quirky looking, he may not play the leading man. He may play a lot of character parts, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But vocally, it's the same kind of thing. Like, you, you have to kind of get a sense of what kind of characters can I book. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you want to make that as clear as possible in your demo so that the agent can get right away, oh, we don't have anybody like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Or the client gets, oh, that's what we get if we hire her. Right. And one of the problems with my first demo is that I was trying to show so many different things mm -hmm. that the feedback I started getting was, we don't know who you are. We don't really know <laughs> yeah. who she is. We yeah. don't know what to do with her. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saying, but I do so many different things. Yeah. I want to show I'm them versatile. variety. Yes. Exactly. And the funny thing is that when I was looking for an agent, when I remade my demo and I got less versatile and more specific, 
it opened the door to the agency, and then I could show that agency mm -hmm. my versatility. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah, Boom. Yes. exactly. And you can always show your versatility also while you're auditioning because that's when you really exactly. bring it to the table, right? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That is the job. Yeah. Um, that's really, really cool. Uh, for, thank you for sharing that because mm -hmm. I think that it's good for, <laughs> for everybody out there to hear that from a pro to say, hey, man, listen, this it worked for me. This is the way it is. Don't be taken advantage of. When you hear a class that says, hey, you'll walk out with mm -hmm. a demo, that's just an upsell. They're just want to trying to get you to the class, especially yeah. when it's an introductory class. Absolutely, and if yeah. you're a newer, you're 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 new to this, and then it's like, oh, in in four weeks I'm going to be a pro. I just think, I mean, maybe that might happen for some people. Yeah, but um, it's it's the exception rather than the yes. yeah. I think. Yes. So. I mean, clearly you, you have a really good sense of your instrument, your voice, and what it can do. <laughs> but I want to know is how did you discover its possibilities? Like, wh wh how did you learn to discover, wow, I can do that and I can do that? That is a great question. Um, and she thought about that question. I, I, I figured. I'm I just figured, reading like, it. Who, she who came up we with it. share everything. <laughs> she comes up with we the good questions. I read them. We don't get points uh, for questions. <laughs> it's our question. I well, it, if by ours, you, yes, we know. We know. <laughs> no, it, it is a great question, though. Yeah. And, and I think that it comes down to two things. It comes down to experimentation and play. Yeah. Um, and the best example I can give of that in my own career is that I got this this audition piece of copy and it was for a baby and and I'm like I can't do a baby you know mm. and I don't even know if I want to send this in this is ridiculous I don't know I, I can't I can't even figure out how to do this so I'm just in my house and I'm making start making stupid noises and I'm like yeah <laughs> And you start messing around, yeah. mm -hmm. and before I knew it, I had sent in this audition. You were a baby. And years later, I was a baby. <laughs> now she's like the top baby booker. You know what? <laughs> I don't mean to toot my own horn, right? but I book a lot of babies. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it, if I wasn't afraid to kind of get stupid and, yes. and play around, you know, that's how you experiment with things. And I tell people like if I go to conventions or or you know somebody asks me a question or something, uh, you know how sometimes you'll listen to your voice on an answering machine and you're like, gosh, do I really sound yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's getting used to how your voice sounds. Like, so many people that say, I want to be in voiceover, are kind of afraid of their own voice. Yeah, not yeah. good, yeah. And so you've got to start taping yourself, and you've got to start playing around and how high can your voice go, how low can your voice go. If you start going, and then you start talking, what happens if you start talking like that? You just kind of make something up, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that's how you kind of discover how to mm -hmm. use your instrument. And it's also why, especially with animation, and especially with women, you cannot be afraid to look foolish yes. and sound foolish. I was just going to say, you can't. Yes. You I mean, can't. right now, you're sitting here doing babies and like, <laughs> in front of a million people. And, and, and I you don't care. she felt does. sexier. <laughs> See? I, the calls are rolling in. Exactly. <laughs> okay, let's take a call right Thursday now. Night. We have a, wow. who oh, we have on the phone? That's Hi. right. Oh, this is Rob no for The Kari. answer is no one. <laughs> Hey, Kari, uh, could you do that voice if yeah. we go out? Yeah, well, actually, you know, every once in a while, the guys do find the, the baby voice. Like, that's, and you're like, what? Uh, you find that cute? Uh, no. Yeah, it, yeah. it's so. pretty neat that you could do all that stuff, man. I mean, it's 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 kind of neat. I, I'm always, you know, I love it when people can do, like, she does some crazy stuff, too, that cracks me up all the time. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, but but uh, that fearlessness and, yeah. and the, oh, I have to be, you, I mean, you can't be worried about the drool coming down your chin. You or, really can't. You I can't. mean, you, you cannot be afraid to laugh at yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, animation is just so silly and so fun. And I, I find that the the people that are at the top of their games are, are just not afraid to just completely look ridiculous. Yeah. And it makes magic. Yeah. 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 You've got to be a little nuts, right? You've got to be a little nuts. Yeah. And in some cases, you got to be a lot a nuts. A lot nuts. Yeah. A lot yeah. nuts. Exactly. Well, I have to say that I know a lot of people <laughs> in the animation world, and they're all crazy. <laughs> So, yes. you know, from, from Rob Paulson to, to Billy West to Jess Harnell, yes. you, they're all nuts. We're mm -hmm. all a little mad here. You, you yeah. guys are mad, and in, in a good way, of yes. course. Um, You're harmless. So, You're lovely, 
lovely, harmless, totally. bad people. Um, so, in audition, you still audition. I do. Right? Okay, you're not one of those special projects that never auditions. Yeah. You just get the job and still no. audition. No, and I think that's that's another misconception about voiceover is that even the best of the best in the biz, you yeah. are constantly auditioning, and mm -hmm. so. If I can insert one of my biggest pieces of, of advice right now yeah. is learn to love the audition process because mm -hmm. it never stops. I mean, I'm lucky enough that now I'm at a point where sometimes I'll get cast directly on projects, but, you know, the majority of the time I'm still auditioning every single day yeah. with everybody else. So, so how do you look at auditioning? What's your, how, how, what's your outlook? Um, I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy it, especially... Um, when I get to the callback situation, mm -hmm. you know, and you get to go in for the producers or whatever in the studio, it's it's just a chance to perform. Yeah. And and I love to perform and I live for that search to get that one moment where you get that one tiny piece of timing right mm -hmm. yeah. where you walk out of that audition feeling like, Man, I did the very best yeah. I could. Yeah. Because yeah, you left your best in there, and the rest yeah. is, out, is out of your hands. Everything else you can't control. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. can only control, you know, what what you do in the room. Do you audition mainly from uh, from home, or do you go into your agents more often? Um, most of the time, I audition from home. There's some major construction going on right now. Oh, nice! And yeah. the the enemy of the voiceover actor is the leaf blower. Oh, oh god! The mighty. And they start earlier than yes. ever anymore. I'm like, really. Seven? Or jackhammers. They're they're yeah. both pretty pretty. Everybody's gnarly. watching HGTV and <laughs> renovating yes, their yards and yeah. their homes. Yeah. So so there's been a little bit more auditioning at the agent's office yeah. uh, uh, lately. But um, you usually do the first round of auditions either from home or from your agent's office, mm -hmm. and then if you get a call back, a lot of times that's actually at the studio right. uh, for the producers and. You know, and do various. you audition for uh, commercial and animation? I and... do, I do. Um, yes. Okay, so here's my question. Okay. I was leading up to this one question. <laughs> um, he was throwing. I'll just check, 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 throwing. check. I can't check. wait. And here's the question for you. <laughs> I'm in. Um, I'm hooked. So, so an audition comes in, and give us a scenario for both. Okay, a commercial or something for animation. Okay, first animation. An audition comes in, you got a picture of a character, maybe a little back story or whatever. Um, how do you break that down into saying, okay, I'm gonna go with this. What's your process of breaking down that, that story for that character and giving him life? Yeah, you know, it's, it's different for every audition. And it, for me, it comes down to what info you're given. And the more info you're given, the better. Uh, it can be anything from a picture. If you have a picture of the character, that's amazing because mm -hmm. if the if the character has these really big eyes, then automatically uh, maybe you want to make it sound like a little bit scared, you know. Uh, so the physical description of the character is, yeah. is going to you know give you a lot of clues. How the text is written, you know, if there's no punctuation and there's these huge chunks of dialogue, maybe the character talks really really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the network. Mm -hmm. gives you clues right mm -hmm. now because if you watch cartoons the cartoons are on Cartoon Network right now have a very different tone and style than the ones that are on Nickelodeon and the ones that are on Disney Junior uh, Disney Junior mm -hmm. are very different than the ones that are on at different times of the day for Disney yeah right. so um, if you get a piece of copy and it's for a character for a Disney Junior show and you're going in for a villain, you don't want to make that villain too scary. Right, because it's for little kids. Because yeah. Disney Junior is, is aiming towards a preschool age. Yeah. So the villains for that age are going to be different than even 10 to 12 year olds. Exactly. So, so all of those things are kind of what I take into account when... Very, very good. Are you, um, are you good at self-direction? I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right. I go through periods of time where where uh, I think, man, I, I, I kind of need a fresh ear mm -hmm. on this. But usually I'm one of those people that kind of goes with my my first instincts on a character. Sometimes I'll have two takes on it, but a lot of times I'll have like, uh, this is how I feel it should yeah. Yeah. be. Do you edit your takes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no. Her but nose this is, grew a little. This is, this She's is like, uh, ish. <laughs> I, I edit them, but uh, my my uh, prowess in editing is not not vast. Okay. So. She'll be good at everything. So Karen. you just make Why? sure that you, you don't lose anything in there that you know you don't want anybody no. to hear. Nothing like too. That, right? Yeah. I can do the I can do the basic editing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah, every once in a while I'll like do something and I'll be I'll be really annoyed and I'll swear and I'll be like, well, I got to go back and edit that out. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, how do I do Oops. that? Oh yeah, delete. That's right. Um, very very good. And hey, delete. thank you for sharing some of your little tricks. Um, yeah, I hope they helped. What about commercial? Everybody right now, you read the specs for everything and they want real, conversational, relatable, uh, girl next door, guy next door, mm. non-announcer. Right. Non-actor. Your, yeah, non-actor. What's your interpretation of that? Um, you know, I, I book a lot more animation than I do mm -hmm. commercial uh, VO work. Uh, but yeah, there is that. I find that the the more of a hurry I'm in, the better I seem to do because I just I can't care too much, and so you just throw it away and, and run out the door, it. and you yeah. don't think about it. Um, yeah. By the way, that right there is the trick. Yeah. The yeah, trick just, is just not really to that's real. put too much. Yeah, that, that is real. I gotta you know, go. We're not thinking about um, what we're doing right but now. But wait, I have to. I have to. <laughs> speaking of commercials, yeah. You've done wonderful on camera work, but I swear that my most favorite thing is. The Mud Woman. Oh, Ew. the Swiffer Mud the Girl. That was actually an on-camera. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That is like you've done other on-camera stuff, which is lovely. But for me, like that, and before it was before I knew you, and then I realized, oh my gosh, that's Kari. If you, well, it's on YouTube. It's on iSpot.tv. <laughs> oh, the best. Ew. I mean, that is the yeah. best. It's so great. And the little squeaky shoes. I mean, oh my I loved gosh. that campaign. And the little dusty cowgirl. And <sighs> it was so good. That was one of those ones where so I went into good. the audition and had the best time. And um, literally, they had big mats laid out on the floor. Yeah. And oh, they were when like, you jump on and it. they said, we want you to kind of like hmm. throw yourself down onto the floor. And, and so I'm like, oh, oh, oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they told me later, they're like, we knew. <laughs> We knew yeah. immediately, yeah. but but it's and again it goes back to the not not taking yeah. yourself too seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but I just love the doing delivery that. of the oh, it's just you have everyone's looking at it now. It's yeah. sad. Yeah. They it's actually sad. did put me up on wires too. Did they? Yeah, they had a huge uh, kind of rectangular piece up by the ceiling mm -hmm. in the the shooting stage that we were on, that was going to be the the head of the mop. Right. And so they had me hooked up to wires, and then at the certain count, they would all like. And they'd shoot me up to the ceiling, and I'd have to bump against it. So, so oh, I did all fun. my own stunts. Yes. <laughs> and she's her in own stunt In heels woman. and a dress. In heels Thank and a dress. Thank you. With a purse. Girl after my own heart. Thank you. I That's right. Okay. love anyway, that. Anyway, I just had to give you props for that. <laughs> Thank so you. brilliant. So brilliant. <laughs> she should have a spin off, The Little Mud she Girl. Should. She, she should. She should have her own little show. She does. Absolutely. So good. Um, okay. So. You've been around for a while doing amazing work. You've seen a lot of different changes in the business. From where you sit right now, what do you think it takes? What do you need to really be in the business today as a voice actor and be competitive? Um, persistence is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes people will come up to me and they'll they'll kind of talk about what they're doing and they'll have me listen to their demos and things like that and all the pieces are in place and all I can say to them is you just have to keep doing what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, because it is very competitive and um, it, it, you know I, I never want to discourage people that oh like celebrities are you know taking so many more of the jobs but there is more celebrity casting mm -hmm. and so a lot of times people are saying well what's wrong with my auditions nothing's wrong with your auditions your auditions are great um, it's just maybe a little bit more competitive than it was some years back. Right. Also with the internet and all of the new technology that we have, you can be auditioning from all over the country, so yeah. things have changed even since I started. Oh, yeah, uh, so the, sure. the, the landscape of voiceover in general has just changed a lot. So the biggest thing is persistence. Just persist, persist, persist. Yeah. Uh, and keep training, keep taking classes. I, I personally feel that people fall into two different camps. They're, they're either the people that are super versatile and do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. or they're people that do a couple of things, but they do them very, very, very well. Uh, you know, they've got very interesting built-in voices, but they're great actors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, if you don't do a million different voices, that's okay but you have to work even harder on the acting chops. You yeah. have to work even harder on your audition chops and just getting your 
your voice out there. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Love it. Absolutely. Love it. Um, <clears throat> How did you navigate through the times in your career when maybe the phone wasn't ringing off the hook and the email box wasn't full or the pager wasn't going off? Oh man, <laughs> you're dating me a little. Did you ever have a pager? No, you were post pager. You know, I was post pager. You were post pager. I was a little okay. post pager, yeah. but I was not post kind answering of machine. big cell phone or yeah. answering yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I still have an answering machine. Yeah. Do and you? people actually leave me messages yeah. once in a while. Do you check it though? <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't either. I tell people in my answering machine, uh, do not leave a message. Don't leave for a message. Me because I'm not going to get back I'll here. I'll never get it. Yeah, yeah I'll never so get it. So I basically it. just have an answering machine to tell people that I'm not going to answer it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Email yeah. me if you want to respond. <laughs> well, you know, you have to you have to find the survival job. You know, people are always saying, "Well, how do you how do you make a living and pursue your art?" And I say, "Young Jedi, that is the question for every artistic person in any yeah. artistic field." Mm -hmm. So, when I was coming up and starting and everything, I had various survival jobs. Um, I worked at Victoria's Secret. I worked uh, at a telemarketing place for about a hot minute, and uh, I worked at the front desk of a kid's karate school. Wow. You did not. I did. That's good I character did. research right there. It, yeah. was, it was pretty fun. Actually, that, wasn't good, that was good character research because sometimes my friend, who was also working there with me, when I was off, I would call her, and I would pretend to be parents scouting out the school, and so I'd keep her going as long as I could before I'd start suggesting really inappropriate things on the phone. <laughs> and then eventually she'd say, is this Kari? <laughs> <laughs> is this nice. Kari? Yeah, so. Working on the improv, baby. Working on Just, the improv, yeah. working on the different nice. voices. But, so you find a way, I found a way to make a living and mm -hmm. I was training a lot. I was taking every class that I could take. I was, you know, it, it was odd. I, I was still in the school of thought of mailing out postcards and notes and thank you notes and things like mm -hmm. that. I'm huge believer in thank you notes um, yeah. and it, you just kind of keep finding ways to do what you love when it's not paying until yeah. it starts yeah did paying. you ever think of quitting I did I did I had this one moment in my first <laughs> I know she's yeah, like right? revealing like, uh, oh, in a very special segment of the Kari Wall <laughs> yeah uh, I had a moment in the first five years and uh, I was so broke that I had 97 cents mm. in my checking account. Wow, that's a lot of dough. And I was <laughs> talking to this friend of mine and I just started crying and I said, I just want some Taco Bell and I can't even afford Taco Bell. <laughs> that's bad. And she said, I'm gonna give you $5. Oh. Go buy yourself some Taco Bell and get a good night's sleep and get up and approach it again. Tomorrow's a That's fresh a day. That's a good friend. So, that was a good friend. Yeah. So that was really hard. And during that same time period, you know, I, I told another friend, I don't think that I can really say that I've given LA a shot until I've been here five years. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, even though I was kind of at the end of my rope for a little yeah. while there, I was like, I'm gonna stay five years and just see if something happens. Mm -hmm. and, and it did. Yeah. It's beautiful. Boy, were you glad that you didn't quit. I am very glad I did not yeah. quit. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked that same question to uh, Carlos Ar 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 Arzaki. Carlos and, <laughs> and And he said, he, I, we asked him what the best advice he'd give to anybody. He said, don't quit. Mm -hmm. Don't quit. Because he thought about quitting so many times. And every time he thought about quitting, man, a week later, he got the, the biggest job he ever got. Biggest so, job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. So you just got to stick with it, man. You're in for the long haul. That's yeah. right. Meditate on that. Meditate or on that. We'll go take a break. Yeah. yeah. For shameless promotion. There you go. This see sponsored you later. by Taco hey, Bell. See you later, alligator. Live moth. <laughs> Live months. Hey, guess what? End of part one, but good news. We'll be back next week with part two. Yay. And in the meantime, you guys, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. Thanks so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz.